What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I'm, of course, Pitching Ninja, and I'm here with a very sleepy Will Leahy, who's been whining all morning. What's up, Will? This isn't true. Slanderous nonsense. Ready to crush the week, Ninja. And remember, guys, hit subscribe. Make sure you never miss any of these videos. I'm doing you a favor by reminding you. Let's go. I'm going to start with Dean Kramer, who had six strikeouts and in seven innings, giving up no earned runs. He had these curveballs and nasty splitters. And he faced Marco Gonzalez, who had four Ks in six innings, giving up two runs, and had this elevated fastball and this changeup. Mackenzie Gore looked good. He had six strikeouts and five and two thirds innings, giving up two runs. He had this 98 mile an hour heater, this curveball, and slider. He faced Christopher Sanchez, who had one strikeout in four and a third innings, giving up three runs, and had this dirty changeup. Luis Heel had eight Ks in four and a third innings, giving up two runs. He had these heaters and changeups and had this 92 mile an hour changeup. I don't know. It always freaks me out to hear changeups at 92 miles an hour. You remember when fastballs were fast at 92 miles an hour? He faced Bowden Francis, who had five Ks and in three innings, giving up three walks and two hits. And his fastball changeup and curveball. And also gave up this monster home run to Giancarlo Stanton. It is always a bad sign when Angel reaches in his ball sack before the ball goes over the wall. An impromptu dog of the day from pitching into from John Carlos Span, Span, Stanton just absolutely spanking this ball. You know, Ninja, he might not hit his weight, and he strikes out more in a week than Tony Gwynn did in his career, but when he takes out the shillelagh and gets the wood on it, Ninja, he puts on thrashings that nobody else in the sport seems to be able to do. I did love Angel reaching, into, reaching to grab a ball like, hey, I think you're going to need this. It's it's awesome. Demoralizing for the for the hurler, if you will. But. It really is. But at least he doesn't let him sit out there for a long period of time, like wallowing. He's like, yeah, you might want to get him this ball so we can get back to it. Sean Manaya had six strikeouts in five innings, giving up one run. Looked good again. And he had these fastballs and sweepers. And he faced Andrew Abbott, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up two earned runs and had this fastball and changeup. Joe Boyle, who did not have a great outing last time out and disappointed me. Had six strikeouts and five scoreless innings with two hits and three walks. He had these filthy sliders, including this backflip slider, and got a sword. And this is more of the Joe Boyle that I expect. He faced Jack Flaherty, who had five Ks in six innings, giving up six runs. He had these fastballs, but did end up getting hit pretty hard. Garrett Crochet was nasty with five strikeouts and five innings, giving up two runs. He had this 99-mile-an-hour heater, this cutter, and this behind the back leg slider. Look at that. But he got pulled before I could win my K prop parlay because I had him for six and needed him. He faced Alec Marsh, who had three Ks in four and two thirds innings, giving up three runs and had this fastball and slider. Colin Ray had three Ks in six innings, giving up one run, had this sweeper. He faced Emerson Hancock, who gave up eight runs in three and a third innings. He did have six Ks. Picked up K's on these fastballs and sliders, but still kind of a disappointing performance for that former first round pick. Max Meyer had three K's in five innings, giving up one run at this fastball and slider. Kyle Gibson had five K's in six innings, but actually got shelled, giving up seven runs. He had these sweepers. Shota Managa had three K's in four innings, giving up two hits and no runs. His ERA stands at a sterling 0, 0.00. Do you think that's sustainable, Will? After his opening press conference, anything goes with this guy, Ninja. Go Cubs, go, baby. Imanaga caged Shohei on this fastball and then got other Ks on his fastball and splitter. He faced Gavin Stone, who had five Ks in three innings, giving up one earned run, but gave up five runs total. He had this fastball, slider, and, of course, his patented changeup. Renal Blanco was good again yesterday, picking up four Ks in six innings, giving up one hit, and had a no-hitter going into the sixth inning. He could have become only the second person to throw back-to-back no-hitters in Major League history. He faced Dane Dunning, who had seven Ks in six and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs, and had these sinkers and sliders. Ryan Pepio had the performance of the day yesterday with 11 strikeouts and six scoreless innings, giving up three hits. He had 21 swings and misses this game, leading the day for all pitchers. He had these fastballs and sliders. He faced Dakota Hudson, who had four Ks in six innings, giving up three runs and had this slider. 
Matt Waldron had a very good performance yesterday with five strikeouts and five and a third innings, giving up no earned runs. He had this painted fastball and sweeper. But of course, everybody watches Matt Waldron for his knuckleball, and he did not disappoint. Look at this knuckleball that only had 64 RPMs. Yep, just over one rotation per second. It's just a thing of beauty. This thing has a mind of its own. It is also the lowest spin rate strike on a knuckleball in StatCast history. And this thing looks like it just decides where it wants to go at the last second, which is what I love about knuckleballs. They're unpredictable, nonsense, crazy stuff. He faced Logan Webb, who had three Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs, and had these fastballs and changeup. Tanner Houck was his nasty self with yeah, seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up no runs. He had this nasty two-seamer, these wicked sliders, including this dead zone slider. And here's an overlay of his sinker and slider that just shows you how filthy this man is. These pitches tunnel on the way to the plate and watch them veer off into opposite directions on opposite corners of the plate. Just nasty stuff from Tanner Halk. What do you think about Tanner Halk, Will, our resident Red Sox fan? Listen, you don't want to see this guy get angry. He's absolutely incredible, and uh, just a joy to watch on the, on the pretty solid Red Sox pitching staff this year. He faced Chase Silseth, who had seven strikeouts and in five innings, giving up three runs, and had these nasty splitters. Chris Sale had perhaps the most spectacular outing yesterday. He had six strikeouts and five and a third innings, giving up two runs. He had these fastballs that looked like vintage Chris Sale, this nasty changeup, and these absolutely disgusting sliders. He gets a strike on this slider that hits the batter on a swing. That is ridiculous. And even more ridiculous is this slider to Marte. I don't know how Marte checks this swing. This is amazing. He almost got a death sword on him. And this would not have been Marte's worst sword ever. As a, as a Sox fan, it's great to see Sale continuing to dominate a martyr for the squad winning the 2018 World Series. Best of luck to, to Sally boy. And the, the Braves really need him with uh, Strider on the on the bench for some period of time. Um, having Sal step up, I kind of knew he would yesterday, and he did not disappoint at all. He faced Ryan Nelson, who had seven Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and had these fastballs and sliders. Now into my filthiest relievers. Hunter Harvey had this 99-mile-an-hour heater and wicked splitter. Tiago Vieira had this perfectly painted 98 mile an hour fastball. And we'll get back to him in our moment of Zen. Ryan Walker had this 95 mile an hour two seamer. And I love this home plate view because you can see the movement and how deceptive Walker is. He turns his back to you. He also had this slider for a sword. Camilo Doval had this sinker and sliders. Cue the trumpets. Edwin Diaz had this fastball and slider. And Brent Suter had this fastball that hit Pete Alonzo in the elbow, not earning Alonzo a hit by pitch because Alonzo was ruled to have either not moved out of the way or intentionally moved in the way of this pitch. What do you think about this call, Will? Well, the Mets have a, a recent history of, of pulling this move, including the game uh, a year or two back. It was a walk-off hit by pitch, and I think the umps are trying to get revenge on that still. I don't hate the call. I think it's the right call. Also, if you have an elbow pad on, I think that softens it. You know, like if, if you're if you're going in there raw dog and you jam your elbow out there to get hit, then I'll give you the base maybe. But if you're if you're feeling no pain from getting hit, then you're not getting anything from me. I'm I'm with you. I feel that. I think it was the right call. My top five pitches for the day yesterday. Number five, I'm gonna have Tanner Houck's wicked dead zone slider. At number four, Garrett Crochet's behind the leg slider. At number three, this 3,162 RPM curveball from Phil Maton that gets the flinch and catches a zone. At number two, this knuckleball with 64 RPMs that had a mind of its own from Matt Waldron. And at number one, both of these sliders from Chris Sale. Just absolutely disgusting stuff from the Sale monster. No one ever called him that. No one ever called him that, did they? Unfamiliar with the nickname, did you? And now my pitching ninja moment of Zen. We're gonna flash back a couple years ago when Tiago Vieira had this pitch during warmups. He didn't quite have the pinpoint command that he had yesterday. And I love Gary Cedarstrom's deadpan face on this. 
Just an absolute baseball classic. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. We're going to start with Zach Gallon for 6Ks or more. Take Reese Olsen for 5Ks or more. And top it off with Luis Castillo for 5Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?